to your glorious day. You call my name. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I breathe. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name, You called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day Hallelujah. That's a glorious day when God took us out of that grave, made us new, made us whole again in his name. We are children of God. That is a privilege to be called children of God. Amen. Sing that one more time. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me it's amazing who am i that you are mindful of me that you hear me when i is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me it's amazing so amazing i am a friend of god i am a friend of god God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me
friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. He calls me friend. He calls me friend. Hallelujah. He is a friend of ours. Amen. Not only a personal friend, he is also our father. He is everything that we need that we don't have here in the world. Amen. The Lord is good. He's good all the time. Mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Thank you. 
he is, he is good all the time. Glory, hallelujah. At this moment, let's take the time and just give a little time to God as we transition to the, our, the worship part. And just give it all to God right now, just you and him. Just thank him for the day, for everything he's done throughout the week. For we take a day at a time, Lord. You have no 
of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. every chain. He is a chain breaker. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful name in the name of Jesus. You know, his name has power to break everything that may hold you back. But there's power in his name, power to redeem, power to set free. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. There's power in the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name that you and I can come into his presence and gather in his name. Amen. God is so good this morning, and he's good every day. It's good to see all of you here this morning. God bless you all. You may be seated. We want to welcome each and every one of you here this morning. Welcome to the house of God, Christian Life Church with our pastors, Joe and Eva Garcia. We welcome you. Good to see each and every one of you here. And we also want to welcome you, those who are watching online. Welcome to Christian Life Church. And before, um, I just want to go ahead with our 
announcements. I do have a couple of announcements here this morning. And um, the first one is, is to silence your phones so we don't disrupt the service. Don't forget to put those phones on vibrate or silence so that way the um, preaching is not interrupted. On March the 17th, this coming Friday, we have a meeting, all the women, at the home of Vanessa, Vanessa Elias. So if um, plan to be there, it'll be at 7 o'clock p.m. It's going to be at her home. It's a time of fellowship, a time of um, getting into the word of God, a time for prayer, and invite someone. I encourage you to bring someone out. So again, that will be this coming Friday at 7 p.m. So we hope to see you there. If you have any questions, you can ask Sister B, who is behind me. Um, you can shoot Vanessa a text. If you need their address, we can provide that to you. Also, if you have any questions, you can ask myself as well. On March the 18th, the following day, which is Saturday, all oh men, get ready for the men off-roading. Don't miss out. It'll be a time of fun a time of fellowship, a time of um, getting into the word of God. So bring someone, um, bring someone to hear the word of God, bring someone to come out and have a day of fun and meet here at the church at 5.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Cost will be $25. If you do have any questions, you can see any of the men's leaders. We have Brother Jesus, um, who else? Brother Jesus, Brother Rudy, and um, Pastor, I was going to say Brother Adam, but he's not here. But we can ask Pastor as well. If there are any questions about the off-roading, don't miss out. So Saturday is your day, man. March the 25th, we have an outing for our children's ministry. It'll be at the Phoenix Zoo. Parents are welcome to join. So if you have any questions on this, um, you can ask myself or Sister Mary Lou or Angelica. So it is a trip at the zoo be here at the church at 8 30 a.m on march 25th sign up don't forget to sign up it'll be 25 dollars, which includes your entrance it includes your shirt your shirt with the church logo it includes your lunch and it includes pizza at peter piper right after the event so don't miss out all children march the 25th at the phoenix zoo so we hope to see you there as well any questions, you can see myself, Sister Mary Lou, or Angelica. Okay, and with that, I just want to invite you to stand on your feet as we get ready to give unto the Lord this morning. We're going to turn to the Word of God, to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7. I'll be reading three verses to you this morning. Verse number 7, verse number 8, and verse number 10. The word of God reads like this in Jesus' name, and it's up on the board as well. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, this word cheerful giver has been on my mind all week long. And I was like, God loves a cheerful giver. You know that it is an opportunity to come into the house of the Lord and give unto him. You know, God does not not want our bank account, but he wants our heart. Where is our heart in obedience and out of our love for him? He loves a cheerful giver. It's a joyful expression to come and give unto the Lord. You know, as we come and give and we deposit our, our offerings this morning, let's do it out of a grateful heart. Let's do it because God has been so good to us. Let's do it because he should mean everything to us. You know, as you receive a gift from a person, you want to receive it. Like, say, for instance, if I give a gift to a person, I want to give it with joy. And I want to see the expression on their face. And that's the way the Lord is. He wants to receive with your heart of joy, with your heart of excitement, bringing a gift unto him for who he is. Amen. So can you imagine receiving a gift and you have a sour face? You know, you're having a, a face that you're like, oh, do I really have to give this? I really don't want to, but I'm going to give it anyways. See, God does not want us with that attitude. God wants us to be very grateful. I am very grateful to my God for who he is. 
Amen, for what he has done. Also, let's jump to verse number eight. God is able to bless you abundantly. See, there's a promise with this verse. He is able to bless you, but it is up to you. How much are you willing to give? How much are you willing to sacrifice? How much are you willing to put aside for him? He's willing to, be, he's able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, God is going to provide everything that you need and you will abound in every good work. And the last verse will be number 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, God is our supplier. He's the one that supplies. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, he will also supply and increase your store of seed. And he will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. What a great God that we serve, that he will increase. Amen. He will always bring the increase. You know, so when we give, let's give with that grateful heart. You know, tax season is around the corner. How many of you love to pay your taxes to the government? You know, it's like exactly about a month away. And I'm still making a frown because I have to pay. And um, it's not a small amount. But, you know, we, we have to pay those taxes. And But you know what? We have to pay bills, too. We have to pay the government. We have to do things in our life. But you and I have the opportunity to give to give unto our God. So let's not come sourly. Let's not come with a sad face, but let's come with the joy of expression. Say, thank you, Lord, for this is the day that you have made. And everything that I have comes from above. In Jesus' name, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before your presence this morning, my God. We come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just thanking you, my God, for this new day that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, my God, for your many blessings, Lord, that you shower upon us every day, Father. We thank you, Lord, for our church, Lord, that we can congregate in your name, Father God, and gather, Lord, in your name and honor you for who you are. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the tithes and the offerings, Lord, that we are about to pick up this morning, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you would bless the giver, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to bless the tithes and the offerings, Father God, a hundredfold. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for blessing this church, Father God. We pray, Lord, my God, that you continue blessing this church and in every area, Father God. Bless our pastors, Lord, of this church, Father God. Bless them in every area, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. We come this morning, Lord, not grudgingly, not sorrowfully, Lord, but, Lord, we come, Lord, with a grateful heart, Lord, because your word says that you rejoice, Lord, in a cheerful giver, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, that we have, my God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. God is good all the time, amen. Go ahead and take your seats if you would, please. Thank you, choir. Wonderful job, as always. Amen. And, uh, you know, God has been so good, and we need to honor God. The Bible says, I honor those that honor me. And it's so awesome to be thankful for what God has done. Amen. And let's uh, continue and keep in prayer for uh, all those families that are out of town. Uh, of course, we had, to, you know, with the school being out, uh, spring break, a lot of the parents, of course, they take a break and, and they go out. God bless them. May the Lord bless their going in and coming out as well. Amen. Wherever, they, they, uh, where, wherever they're at. Amen. May the Lord bless them. We're going to get into some teaching this morning, and we're going to be talking about something very important, something very interesting, and it's about 
It's your turn. Can you say that with, with say, say with me like this, it's my turn. It's my turn. We're going to be talking about that, but before we get into that, if you brought your Bibles with you, put them over your heads with me if you would, please. Say with me, this is the word of God and everything in it is true. And because it is true, I will apply it to my life. Amen. God is so good. Uh, open up your Bibles, please, to the book of John, chapter 5, verse 1 and on. And yes, we like to continue to encourage, uh, I know we have people watching online as well, and those who are here uh, for our man's gathering this coming weekend, amen, we love to do stuff like that. You know, we do something different uh, when we go up there, we go and have fun, of course, and, and we do carne asada and all kind of stuff, but the main thing, the main dish is that we have a, a teaching up there, a man's teaching, so it's awesome because uh, you go up there, you have fun, you eat good, but then you get taught really good. Amen. There's good teaching going on. And there's an uh, uh, excellent friend of mine that, uh, that will be here. He's coming in from, uh, from Chihuahua, Mexico. Amen. And, and, and he's very well known in the Spanish uh, service. But he'll be coming up with us and he'll be sharing some word as well. Amen. And we'll go bilingual, whatever we need to do. We always do if. If, if we need it, amen, that doesn't hold us back. So it's awesome to, to know and to understand that you've got, uh, you know, you have a church that is always on the move, amen. You know, I, I continually say to my family, especially to my kids, if we would have had stuff like this when I was a kid, I would have probably never left church, amen. But in my time, it was my parents, you know, uh, at 15 years old, I said, enough is enough. I'm not going with my parents to church anymore. Because it was you sit there and you have to be right in front. You sit there, you be quiet, and you don't even sneeze. Amen. Can you imagine a kid, a 9, 10-year-old kid, just like this? There ain't no way. Amen. That's when your mom pinches you and, and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're so skinny at that time. You're so, that, that even your bones hurt when you're sitting. And, and, and we didn't have comfortable chairs like we do now. Amen. You had a, a, a bucket on each side. And you had a two by four going across and that was your chair. Amen. So you can imagine sitting there for an hour. The pastor would preach for an hour and a half. And you would have to just be quiet. And their, and their teachings were totally different. Very good teachings. Now that I'm older, I understand. But a 10-year-old will never capture that. You want to hurry up and get out of there. Amen. Praise be to God. But this is the way it was. So now I tell my kids and my grandkids, if we would have had quads and and can and razors and all this stuff like we have today. My God, I would have never left. But anyway, let's get into John chapter 5 verse 1. And it's, it's your turn. Before we begin to read, uh, how many of you have been uh, in line, maybe in the grocery store, maybe at the bank, maybe a, something that you're in a hurry for. Uh, and, and, you, and, and there's a big old line and you only got one thing, the one thing that you need. Let's put it this way. You, you, you have family at your house and you forgot something and you got a bunch of family that's just waiting for you to bring what you forgot from the grocery store. And you ran to the grocery store, you grabbed that one thing and in line of you, it was, uh, it, it, it was uh, uh, how do you call it when they, when they give you the, uh, for food stamps, the... Yeah, that. Amen. When they get and, and, and you got and you got people with grocery carts all the way to the top. Have you seen that? All the way to the top, and you just got one thing. And and, and these people are so happy talking and stuff, and they're they're happy because they got their ticket for the month and stuff. And and you're you're not even thinking about that. You just want to hurry up and, and get to I only got one thing. And you're probably looking at the people saying, Is it okay if I go in front of you? I only got the one thing. And you got about five grocery carts. They they look like a mountain, like South Mountain. Amen. And people are just talking and stuff, and you're, oh my God, I I gotta hurry up. You're in line. You're the, 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 the main issue here is that you're in line and you have to wait your turn. Can I ask you this? Has there been that time where you just want to put whatever you got in your hands and take it back and go elsewhere and just run elsewhere? Because you're looking at all these people. You really don't care about what they have to say because you're so much in a hurry. You want to hurry up and pay and get out of there. Amen. But there comes a time when... You have to wait, and you have to wait patiently. 
But at the same time, the time comes when it's your turn. Turn to somebody and say, it's your turn. Doesn't that feel good when they tell you, you're up. It's your turn. You've been waiting there. I've talked to many people and, and things that they're waiting for. Uh, 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 either, either immigration stuff or, or something that's very important to them. And they've been waiting for such a long time. They're waiting every day running to the mailbox to see if they got that, that paper that they need. Amen. That okay that they need. And it's important. It's important. But you know what I'm, what I'm, what I'm getting at here before we read. There are times... That we get accustomed or used to, I'm waiting. And you talk to somebody and you say, I'm still waiting. And I'm waiting. Months have passed by, I know I'm still waiting. You know, there's something important that you know that you need, but you're waiting for that important thing. You, you hear where I'm coming from. Let's read in Jesus' name. <clears throat> John chapter 5 verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there, there in Jerusalem near, near the Sheep Gate, a pool which in, in Aramaic, uh, Aramaic is, is, is called Bethsaida. Say with me, Bethsaida. And which is uh, surrounded by five uh, covered colonnades. Here is, a great, uh, the, here is a great number of disabled people used to lie, uh, used to lie and, and blind and lame and the paralytic. Let's stop right there. There are people that, that are waiting for their turn. There are people that, you know, when, you're, when, when, when something is wrong with your physical, that you're a blind person, that you're paralytic, something, and you know that there could be help, you're going to go to that place and there's going to be a line because there are many people that need the same kind of help. Can you understand that? Praise be to God. Verse 5. One who was there had been an, inv an inv invalid for 38 years. That's a long time. When Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he had been in, his, in, his con in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Say that with me. Do you want to get well? Remember, you've been waiting for a while and... Right here at the, in this paragraph, as we read, there is an angel that came from time to time to stir up the water. In other words, he would move the water. And the people that were there around it, the paralytic, the blind, and, and those that, 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 that had something wrong with their physical, they knew that if they ran into that pool when the water was moving, instantly they would be healed. So keep in mind, when this is happening... They're not talking about a man that can come and do this or do that or, or a doctor that can help them. They're realizing they're just looking at the water. They're just looking at the water. As soon as that water moves, I'm jumping in. So they're just looking at the water. And they could be there for days. They could be there for years. They could be there for months. But they want to get healed. So they're patiently waiting for their turn. And they're looking at... Uh, at the water. You know, one of the things that, that really catches my attention in this is how long are we willing to wait for what we are needing? How long are you willing to wait for what you are needing? Now, remember, no one can help you. We're talking about, we're talking about bl uh, blind man. We're talking about paralytic man. We're talking about, you know, something in the physical that is not an easy thing to fix. Amen. That Doctors may give you therapy, they may give you medicine, they may, but it, it's not like they're going to fix it. They're, they're giving you a temporary thing. Are you with me on that? Praise be to God. So these men and men and women that are there at the healing of the pool, uh, Bethsaida, they're, they're waiting for the water to move. But nothing is happening. And I can imagine these people talking amongst each other. Now remember, Brother Jesus, if you're a paralytic person and I'm a paralytic person, I'm not looking at you to see who's going to jump first. I want my healing. You want your healing. Think about it. We're friends. We're friends, but we both need the same thing. So let's be honest. As men, as men and women, when you're looking for your healing and you're, you're waiting patiently for that water to move, are you going to wait? And, and, and uh, I'm going to put it to you this way because this is what goes on in our society. 
Are, are we going to say, brother, well, you know what? When the water moves, I'll help you and you help me. And we both go in there as low as we can. No, because you know someone else is going to beat you to it. So what happens? I imagine, brother Jesus, that you and I would say, you know what? When the water, when the water moves, whoever gets there first. Whoever gets there first. We're going to move because, I mean... Remember, they're paralytic. They're, it's not like they can hurry up and get up and, and run. They got to do what they got to do, even, even if they got to drag themselves to that water because they're thinking, I want my healing. I want my healing. Can you say with me, I want my healing. And when you're waiting for something, uh, you know, you got to wait for your turn. So what are you doing? You're, what, you're, you're waiting patiently to wait for your turn. So what do we have here? We have a bunch of people because the Bible describes this as there was a bunch of people around the pool and they were all looking for the same thing, which was healing. They were all looking for the same thing. They were all just waiting. Whoever jumped in there and got into the pool first, that person was healed. Now, a blind man in the same way, he could run, but if he can't see where he's going to, he needed help, didn't he? A paralytic uh, that can't get up by himself, uh, there's a problem. You see, so when you have in your mind, I'm not going to ask for help. I'm not going to let them know I'm just going to run. It just could be that someone else can take your place. So if we go right there to, um, to uh, um, verse 6. When Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he had been uh, in, in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Now watch this. Everybody was looking at the water. Everybody was looking at the pool because everybody knew. If the angel comes, because the Bible describes this as he came from time to time, they never knew when. He came from time to time. They never knew when. So all they knew is they had their, their, their attention on the water. As soon as the water moves, run, jump, you'll get your healing. Whatever it was, blind. Uh, 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 that they couldn't walk, whatever it was, paralyzed, they would instantly be healed. So they were keeping a close eye on that water. They would not move from there. Can you imagine? They would, because if the angel came at 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, that's the time they had to run in. So they were, their, their minds and their hearts were on that pool, on that water. Now watch this. It gets interesting. Because the Bible teaches us right there in verse 6, when Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he, he had been the, uh, in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Now, no one had ever come to the pool to ask anybody in this way, do you want to get well? So they were not accustomed to somebody coming to the pool and saying, do you want to get well? It, it, they, they, they were waiting for the water to move, not for someone to ask them, do you want to get well? So they were not accustomed. But when Jesus, now watch this. When Jesus got close to him, Jesus learned, the Bible says, that he had been there for a long time, tw uh, uh, 28 years. Is that right? 38. Now watch this. That's a long time. 38 years of, of not being able to walk is a long time. 38 years of not being to do what you would like to do is a long time. So you are, you are waiting. This is what I would do. I'm watching closely day and night. And I probably even already practiced how I was going to drag myself to the water as fast as I could. If you, you can't move your legs, but you can move your arms, you're going to drag yourself with your arms as fast as you can. We, you've probably seen on uh, uh, those, those uh, uh, on Facebook or TikToks, whatever, those, those people that, you know, my respects to those people, they don't have any, any, any legs and stuff, and they can move fast. I, I, I remember one that came to my mind that uh, it was only the torso, uh, torso up, he, no legs, nothing. Further down, have you seen those people? And this 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 uh, young man with his with his arms, he would move so fast, and he uses a skateboard to maneuver his rest of the rest of his body. Those those skateboards that the, that the kids used to to play with, that is this this is his transportation to go to place to place. But he moves so fast, 
he moves so fast that he can get on that skateboard and he pushes it with his hands so fast that kids that, that ride these skateboards, they can't catch up to him. So this is, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing what they can do. So this is why I, why I bring this up. I imagine that these people, if they were paralytics or whatever they were, they were, they were probably even practicing, okay, if I, if I see the water, how am I going to move? They were probably even cleaning up there so no rocks would get their hands. I mean, that's what I would do, right? Get everything prepped. When it was your turn, you were going to move on it. But now, Jesus comes into the picture. And he says in verse 6, uh, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to be healed? What would you do that you're waiting for the pool to move? Because all you know is that from time to time, the angel would come and move the water. What would you do? You know, this guy is, 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 is asking me, he's trying to take, he's trying to get me unfocused to what I'm, I got to keep my eyes on the water, not talk to him. He's asking me, do you want to get well? Now, very interesting here. Because there are those times that instead of being focused on God, we are focused on something different because we're waiting for that and not understanding that God can give it to you instantly. Are you with me? I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not that they were doing bad. It's not that they were doing something wrong, waiting for the pool to move. No, that's what they knew how to do. But now, in the picture comes Jesus. And Jesus, the, 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 the Son of God, comes in the picture and says, do you want to be healed? You see, he didn't understand or he did not know what Jesus could do. All he knew is there was a man talking to him, saying, do you want to be healed? Now watch. Look at what verse 7 says. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool. When the water is seared, while I am trying to get in someone else, goes down ahead of me. He knew. See, he thought that Jesus was telling him, I can help you to take you into the pool. He didn't know who he was talking to. What this brings into my mind is there are times that we don't understand who we are talking to. We are waiting for that physical thing to happen instead of God doing the changes or transformation for us. You see, because Jesus is asking him, do you want to be healed? But he's saying, sir, I have no one to help me. Every time the pool, the water moves uh, because I have no help, someone gets in there ahead of me. Now, Jesus was not asking him, do you need my help to get you into the pool? You see, they were in a totally different mentality. Jesus was not asking him, I'm here to help you to get into the pool. He was asking him, do you want to be healed? There was a different, there, there's, there's a difference there. He's not saying, can I help you get into the pool? No. Sir, I don't have anybody to help me. You see, what was going on with this, with this uh, a man? His mind, his heart, his, his eyesight was so set on that water moving that he never thought who was speaking to him. There are those times, there, these, there are, are, are those occasions that we are in the same way. We may be going through a, through a problem, through a situation that we're waiting for, for, for a, a something that to come in in the mail. That we're waiting for something. We're not, we're not really, we, we don't really put our mind and our hearts. Jesus can change it. Jesus can change it. You see, God can do what we could never do. God can change what we could never change. But it, it, at, the, at the same time, are we looking at God or are we just looking at our situation? May I ask you something this morning? How many of us have been through a situation that you realize or think, how am I going to get out of this? How, how am I going to do this? If it's a financial situation, if it's a, 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 a thousands and thousands that, that you got to pay or something, like they were, uh, Sister Chris was mentioning right now about the, uh, the government. When Every year that the, those people that are going to get money from the government, they can't wait to get in line. Amen. You go to H&R Block, you do whatever you have to. You, you'll wait there, you'll sit there and wait for an hour or two or three, whatever, you're going to get some money. But those people that are going to pay, like Sister Chris just mentioned, you don't want to go, you don't want to hurry up and go. You wait till the last minute. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? 
but this is the way we are. Why? You know, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Can I, add, can I add something about this? You either give it to God or you give it to the government. You choose. Yeah. That's why the, the, what she read on, on, what was it, 1 Corinthians? Amen. Uh, God blesses a cheerful giver. You either give it to God or you give it to the government. And I've seen this so many times. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tithe. I'm not gonna this. I'm, this is not the teaching. Okay, I just wanted to add what she said. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna offer. It. That's fine. At, at tax time, they're gonna hit you. This, this, it always happens because the Bible says, "Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give God what belongs to God." But many people have not understood that uh, that verse right there. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not. Okay, you choose. You choose. But remember, or you give it to God or the government is going to take it from you. Before you know it, they're going to hit you with a big thing. You're going to go, wow, they take out of my check that much. Can you say to the government, no? They'll take it from you. Or they'll put a tax lien on your properties. Praise be to God. Just, just to give you a heads up. Amen. Tell somebody next to you, I'd rather give it to God. Ah, that's my, immediately. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Here you go, Lord. This is yours. I'm not going to argue about that. Now, going back to the teaching. Very interesting. Sir, I have no one to help me. So Jesus is not asking him, do you need my help to put you in the water? He's asking him, do you want to be healed? Now, can I ask you this? Do you trust, how much do you trust God that God can do something for you? Do you trust your government that the government can do something for you? Do you trust your, your compadre that they can do something for you? Do you trust, you know, there's nothing wrong with having friends. There's nothing wrong with, of course, with, with our families. But let me tell you something. We can't always depend or trust in our families. They, sometimes they, they may not be able to do for us like we think they would do. And then what happens? We end up getting mad. He didn't. She didn't. I did for them. They never did. Maybe something happened and they couldn't help you for some reason. But see, things happen. But when you put your trust in God, when you put your trust in God, He will always be there no matter what he's not asking you for something in return or in exchange this is this is what's going on here with this with this gentleman here Jesus comes up and he realized boy he's been here for 30 uh, 38 years he's been like this in, in the same, same situ situation for 38 years that's a long time Jesus decides to do something for him and it's not to help him to get in the water it's to heal him instantly because you see this is what this teaching brings to us is when we trust and depend on God, there are so many times that we have our minds in something else instead of God. When the doctor comes, I'm going to give you another example. When the doctor tells a person or someone you have, uh, you have a certain type of sickness, you have a cancer that can be, uh, can, can, uh, can be healed, you have this, you have that. Why don't you go on vacation, go do, the, go do your, last, uh, your last thing because you, the, the way we see it here, you only got months to live. So that's on your mind. That's on your mind and you think about that constantly because that's what the doctor told you. But you see, when you know about the things of God, how many of us know about the things of God? We realize one thing, okay, that's what, the, that's what man says. It's not, it's probably not that they're lying to you. That's, that's, what their, that's what their practice is. But when you know about the things of God, you go beyond. Say with me, I'm going beyond because I'm trusting God. And when we trust God, when we depend on God, we're not, we're not going to go on what man says because you realize one thing, that the God that we serve is a mighty God and the same thing that was happening to this man at the, at the healing pool. Praise be to God at Bethesda. It's not that God, that Jesus was telling them, I'm going to help you in the pool. He was telling them, I'm going to heal you instantly. I'm going to do something for you right now. What 38 years could not, what you could not do in 38 years. You've been waiting here at the pool for a long time, day and night. And you're telling me right now, there's no one to help me get in. I'm not here to help you get in. I'm here to tell you, I'm about to do something for you. You have been waiting for this time. It is your turn. It is your turn. And it's so awesome. Can you imagine? This, this man that's been like this for 38 years, all of a sudden, he didn't even have to get into the pool. He didn't even have to have help. Jesus was right there telling him, do you want to get well? All I want is your yes or no. 
That's all. I, all I want is your, you know how important it is. That's why the Bible says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Do you know how important it is that, to, to pay attention to when God is calling you? You know, we, there, there are those times that we've got to get our eyes off of material things. We've got to get our eyes off of so-and-so. We've got to get our eyes off of whom we think that maybe can help us. The one that will always help you instantly. His name is Jesus and he's here this morning to help you in whatever it is that you may need. And it gets better. Turn to somebody and say, let's get better. Go with me to Acts chapter 3. Check chapter 3 verse 1. Acts 3, 1. Praise be to God. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at, the, at 3 in the afternoon. Remember, these gentlemen, they had, they had already chosen 3 o'clock in the afternoon to go pray at the temple. Change it. Now a man crippled, another crippled man, a man crippled from birth, this one was from birth, not 38 years, but from birth, was being carried to the temple, temple gate called Beth uh, Beautiful, where he was put every day to, to beg from those going into the temple courts. Now watch this, stop right there. We have a different gentleman here with, with the same situation, crippled. Crippled now. He's not at the pool. He's not at Bethesda. He's not at the pool waiting for somebody to help him get in. But he's in front of the temple. The Bible says that they would carry him every day. He needed help to be carried to where he would, every day where he would sit and beg for money. He chose to, to, to be seated right there uh, where the temple was called Beautiful. That's where he chose to be every day. Now, he's not thinking, now watch this. This guy, he was like this from birth. Not 38 years, but from birth. So he's not thinking of someone that can come and help him. All he is thinking of, I need you to give me money. The help that I'm looking for is financial. It's just like when, we, when we're right there going on the freeways or whatever. You see people with, with their cardboards, I need help. Uh, some have, I won't lie, I need a beer. <laughs> you have all kind of crazy stuff going on out there. Praise be to God. But one of the things that we need to understand is this. We have these people. Now we're talking about a cripple from birth that was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg. He was there every day, Monday, Monday through Monday. He had nothing else to do. Monday, to, this is the way he survived, by people putting in something in, in, his, in his hand or whatever he had to collect money in. Every day he was there. So in his mind, in his heart, he was accustomed to go right there to where the church was called Beautiful, sit there and get money from people. That's what he had in his mind. So this day that the Bible teaches us that Peter and John... Of course, the Bible says 3 o'clock in the afternoon they would go pray. So it had to have been 3 o'clock in the afternoon when this is happening. What's going on? This man that's crippled from birth, in his mind is, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? That's what he had in his mind. Putting his trust in people that could help him with finance. In his mind is... I need to be sat there so that people can help me. They can look at my situation and they can uh, uh, maybe feel sorry for me and, and give me something so that I can survive. This was his way of living. Never did he thought when Peter and John were coming at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, never did he thought today is my day. Never did he thought that that day he was going to be able to walk. Never did he thought. You see, in his mind, it's, I'm going to wait for Sister Chris. He, she passes by here every day and she goes to church. I'm going to see how much she gives me today. Hallelujah. I'm going to look at Brother Jesus when he comes in. He's an usher at the church. I'm going to see how much an usher is willing to give a cripple. Hallelujah. 
Here comes a pastor. Maybe he'll give me a little more. He's a pastor. He comes and preaches, and he's pre he preaches the gospel. He's got to give me something. Are you getting this? Praise be to God. See, his, in his mind, in his heart, is I'm going to wait for Sarita to come here with a little cuatita. She's got to give me at least a dollar from each one. Praise be to God. She, he, he's got his mind on what we can do for him. He's got in his mind, uh, Brother Jesus is going to pass by here, and he knows everything about the way you go into church. And he knows that you serve in the church. So he's thinking, they've got to help me. They've got to help me. Now watch this. When you put your mind and your trust on man, we're going to fail. We're going to fail. And, 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 and I'll show you. Because the Bible teaches us, watch this, go to, uh, go to three. Three, three. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. See, what was he asking them for? He was putting his mind and trust on them that they could do something for him. Because he was accustomed to people doing for him. Never in his mind, he was at the church. But he wasn't at the church looking for God. He was at the church. He wasn't at the church to give a tithe. He was at the church. He wasn't at the church to say hello to the people. He was there at the church to get something from someone. This was his way of living, of survival. But now Peter and John, the Bible says, they're going into the temple. And it even catches my attention why they held back. Why did Peter and John, they could have looked. There's many paralytic men everywhere. There's people that need help everywhere. They could have just said, oh, there's a lot of you everywhere. We're, we, we, it's our, t our time for prayer. Pay no attention. But you see, something happens here at this time. Because they stop. Watch this, go to four. Peter and John stop. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. You know, imagine. Look at us. Why are they saying look at us? Do we look like people that have money? Do we look like people that, that uh, look, look at us? We are the type of people that we are coming for prayer. We're the type of people that we go preach the gospel. We are different. This is when they're saying look at us. Why is Peter and John saying look at us? The time has come that what you look at people for is not going to be what you're going to look at us for today. Look at us. So what happens? I can imagine this, this paralytic man looking up, looking up at them saying, well, are you going to help me or not? That's what he had in his mind. Are you going to give me a buck or two or not? Why, am I, why are you stopping for? Are you going to give me a hard time? What's, going, what's happening? He was waiting for them to dish out money because he was accustomed to that. Never in his mind did he think, it's my turn. Never in his mind did he stop and think what was about to happen for him that day. Now watch this, go to five. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Isn't that what we're talking about? He gave the attention to Peter and John. For what reason? For what? What was he expecting from Peter and John? Money. Money. But now, understand one thing. There are things that God is about to do in your life, in my life, in my life that money can't buy. That money can't do for you. That your family can't do for you. Now remember, he probably had either friends or family go and, go and sit him there in front, of the, uh, in front of the church to ask for money. He had help from somebody. They couldn't help him. They couldn't help him. That's all the help they can give. We'll help you, okay. I'll give you a ride. I'll take you there. I'll sit you there. They probably even said, hey, when you're done, I want, give, give me a cut of whatever you make. I brought you here. Can you understand that? That's the way people are. But look, let's go, to, let's go to six. Are you understanding this message? 
Then Peter said, silver or gold, I don't have. I do not have. But what I have, I give in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He probably, this man probably didn't even have the slightest idea of what Peter and John were saying. He probably didn't even understand, Brother Jesus, of what, hey, are you, what's, what's that got to do with anything? Give me, I, I, I need money. Money and silver, gold and silver, I don't have. So in other words, if you don't have what I'm looking for, why are we even talking? That could have been the end of that conversation. Why are we even talking? Go on your way. Why, do you, why are you telling me, look at me, look at us for, if you're not even going to help me? Go on your way. No. You see, something was about to happen. The unexpected was about to happen to this paralytic man that he didn't even think of what was about to happen. Praise be to God. And this, and this gets interesting because at times we are the same way. We're not thinking what God can do. We're just thinking of what I want, when I want it, how I want it. And if not, I get mad. How many people have we seen? Well, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to pray to God. But if it doesn't happen, then, then, then I'm not going anymore. What is this, a convenience store? Praise be to God. Is this McDonald's where I stop at, where, I, where, where I'm asking it the way I want it? God, I want you to bless me this way. God, I want you to bless me with onions. And God, I want you to bless me with tomatoes. Praise be to God. My brother, my sister, I've got news for you this morning. There are things that God is about to do for you that money cannot do for you. Amen. Praise be to God. You cannot buy salvation. You cannot buy, uh, uh, just like this paralytic man, he could not buy his way uh, to, to stand up and take off running. No. So what's going on? Peter and John, full of the Holy Spirit. Peter and John going to prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They stop by. They represent God Almighty. They stop by and say, what you want, I don't have. Huh? What do you mean you don't have what I want? No. But I have what you need. I have what you need. And this is something that we need to understand. When it is my turn. When it is my turn. This, this man was, was like uh, in the same situation from birth. But the time had come that it was his turn. And he did not even know. It was his turn. Can you imagine all of a sudden when he says get up and walk. Huh? You know I can't walk. I've been sitting here all my life. I've been, I've been sitting here in front of the church asking for money all the time. This is the way I've survived. Now, are you kidding me? Why are you telling me get up and walk? Now, watch this. When God is about, about to do something, we don't even understand that language. Get up and walk. Get up. What do you mean I can't walk? No, get up and walk. You're asking for money. We don't have it, but I got more than what you are asking for. Praise be to God. I don't have what you want, but I got something that you need. What do you, can you imagine this man all of a sudden, his feet straightening up? Something that he was not accustomed to. Something that he had never done before because the Bible says that he was like this for, from birth. So he had never walked at all. He never even knew what walking was all about. Can you understand what I'm talking about? He never knew. He never felt his feet on the ground like you and I feel it. He didn't. All he knew is I got to push myself with my arms. But the day came when he understood one thing. Look at us. And when we began to look at the things of God, when we began to, to look at what God can do, that's when changes are going to take place in our lives. Praise be to God. Now, this is interesting that when we know, is God really doing something with me? Is God really going to heal me? Is God really going to lift me up? Am I going to walk today? Can you see this young man standing up in the place where he could never stand up? Can you imagine what he felt to feel the ground under his feet? Praise be to God. Can you imagine what he felt for the first time in his life? Wow, now I know what walking is all about. He probably, he probably felt tall. 
standing up on his feet and looking at everyone. Hey, now I understand what it is to walk. I'm walking just like you. And the Bible says, now watch this, go to seven. I want to show you something here. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. What's going on here? What would you do? Be honest. What would you do if, if this was you? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow, you did. Oh, thank you. This man, you, we're going to see right now what happened. But when something happens in your life of something that the unexpected showed up and Jesus did it for you, you can't stop but praise him. You can't stop but worshiping. You've got to tell everybody. You've got to let them know, hey, you remember me? I'm the guy that used to be at the, uh, at, at, in front of the church asking for, I'm not asking for anything anymore. Now I can do, I can walk into the church just like you can. He was never walking in the church. He would never even go into the church. But watch this now. Look at the difference. Go to eight. He jumped to his feet. What did he do? And began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts. He had never gone into church. He was always outside asking for money. But now he can walk. He realized one thing. Wow, these men stopped and they said, look at us. And I got, they got my attention. If I would not have paid attention, if I would have said, if you're not going to give me any money, go on your way. But I've got news for you. It's time to pay attention. It is your turn. It's time to pay attention. You're going to get your miracle. It's time to pay attention. You're going to get your healing. It's time to pay attention. Your children are coming to God. It's time to pay attention. Your husband, your wife, someone in your family, they're coming to God. It's time to pay attention. He had been there all of his life, but the day came when it was time to get up on his feet and walk into the temple. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know you're probably looking at me. Why is he getting so excited? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll tell you why, because he's done for me what he hasn't done for you. That's why. He's done for me what he has not done for you. I live what you have not lived. That's why. You know, and, and, and you can say the same thing to me, because we're all different. Praise be to God. Pastor, I'm here because I'm living, I'm breathing. Pastor, I'm here because God gave me life. You see, let me explain one thing. Coming to the church, what did he do after he was healed? He walked into the church with them. In his mind was a totally different view of life. In his mind was a totally different view of things because he paid attention and now he walked into the temple. Hallelujah. May I ask you this morning, with all due respect, why are you here? I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm here because I love God so much. He's done so much in my life. And the calling that's upon me makes me speak. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be here. I'd probably be at a restaurant with my family having breakfast, not even thinking about going to church the way many people do. They say Sunday, fun day. That's what a lot of people live. Sunday is, that's what, that's what it is to a lot of people. To us that have paid attention, like when he says, look at us, we are looking at him. To us that have paid attention, we're saying, I'm getting up, I'm going to church, and I'm going to praise his name because I can walk, I can talk, I can do things. How many people are in Hospitals right now hooked up to machines. They never made it. They wish they were in your seat. They wish they were in our place. They can't. They're hooked up to a machine. They're thinking, am I going to make it tomorrow? Am I going to make it the next day? Am I going to make it the next hour? Because the doctor says he's only got a few hours to live. She's only got a few hours to live. 
How many of us have heard that? Praise be to God. So see, let's be thankful. Let's be thankful that God has raised us up, that God has given us life. Let's be thankful for what God has done. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn just the way it is with us. You see, it's very important to realize I'm not here because I want to. You're not here because you want to. We're here because we are grateful. We're here because we are thankful for what God has done. Can you imagine this man that we're talking about here? He probably kept going to church. He probably realized one thing. You know, the Bible doesn't talk more about his life. But the one thing that, that we do know is that he was all over the place. And they started asking him, who healed you? Who healed you? Because the Bible teaches us that. Who healed you? He says, I don't even know his name. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. Just these guys walked up to me and they said, gold and silver, we have none. But what we have, we give to you. Get up and walk. That's something to question, isn't it? Well, who is this healer? Who are these men? Who do they represent? Who is this Jesus? What we have, we give unto you. Get up and walk in the name of Jesus. Who is this Jesus? Praise be to God. See, it gets interesting when we realize and open up our minds. Who do you serve? Who are we serving here? Why are we here? The Bible says where there's two or three, do I have to be in a, in a packed place for God to hear me? No. Do I have to be? No. You could be by yourself. Because the Bible says where there's two or three. Now watch this. You're never alone. The Holy Spirit is with you. So that makes two of you. Where there's two or three gathered in my name, I am in the midst. God is always with you. Wherever you are, wherever you go, God will listen to you. He, un he knows what you're going through. He knows what you need. He knows your desires. Now, the problem is, am I paying attention to him? Just like this paralytic man, look at us. When, when they got his attention is when he received his miracle. Is God catching our attention? Is God really catching our attention? You see, when he catches our attention, that's what he's going to do for us. Because I'm paying attention to you, God. Okay, you got me. Okay, Lord, you got my attention. He knows what you need. This is why Peter and John, they said, what you want, I don't have. But I have what you need. How did they know? How did Peter and John know that he was going to get up and walk that day? They probably didn't. But they saw a man that needed something and they knew what was inside of them. They knew the God that they served that could do for this man what he was asking for. You see, he was accustomed for one thing, uh, asking for money. And Peter and John were accustomed not for money. They were accustomed to knowing what their creator could do for someone. What a difference. What a difference when you put your confidence in finance. I'm not against it. We need it. But what a difference when you put your confidence in finance and when you put your confidence in God. What a difference when you put your confidence in a doctor and you put your confidence on God. What a difference when you put your, your, your confidence on your, on your boss that he's going to pay you and you put your confidence on the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it, including your boss. What a difference. You see, what is God saying to us in his word here? He's telling you and me, put your trust and faith in God. God will do for you what no man can do. You see, it's the word of God that speaks to us. It's the word of God that gives us life. It's the word of God that gives us breath. It's the word of God that does for us. When we understand it and we put our trust and faith in the word of God, that's when it becomes real in our lives. I'm not here to tell you stories and put you to me. me. Praise be to God. I'm not here for that. I'm here to give you the bread of life. Just like Peter and John, they told him, what we have, what I have, I give unto you. Get up and walk. Wow. Look, even if someone would have said, here's a million dollars, go ahead, live, live it up. That would, that would not uh, pick him up to walk. He would have had the million dollars, but he would have still been the crippled man. 
Praise be to God. May I ask you, what do you prefer if you're crippled? A million dollars or to walk? I'd be the same thing. Money goes and comes. Praise be to God. How much money do you think you spend in a lifetime? Think about it. How much money do you think you spend in a lifetime? More than a million bucks. So, have you ever thought, wow, I'm already a millionaire. From the day one that you, that you lived to the day you die, how much money goes through your hands? Think about that for just, have you ever thought about that? Praise be to God. If, you, if you're from day one and you're 90 years old, give you an example. And, and, and let's just go, Sister Chris, you work at the bank. You're better than this than I am. You're better than I am in this. Uh, and you spent, say you get a paycheck. Say you get a paycheck of, what's a, what's a the, uh, regular rates today? Thousand bucks a week, maybe. You wish. The way, the way life is, everything's so expensive, right? I don't know, what is it, 800? I have no idea. I haven't worked for somebody for 40 years, so I have no idea. I don't get a paycheck like you guys do. I don't. About 900? So go 900 from 1 through 90. Go 800 bucks, what's this, a week? Times 4. How much is that? 8 times 4. Okay, 36, go 36, and that's for 12, for a year. Those of you that are mathematic, what is it, Jose, you're very good at this. Get that calculator out. 400,000, around 400,000 a year, is that it? For 90 years, about $400,000. That's, and that's going cheap. That's going 800 bucks a week. Many, many make more than that. But just to give you an, about 400000 bucks in a lifetime. That, that can't be 400000 It's more than that for 90 years. Yeah, no, no, it can't be that. It's, it's, it's more than that. But anyway, just to give you an idea. There's, there's millions, right? That's the, yeah, that's what I thought. It's got to be. So that's why I was saying... You're a millionaire and not even know it. 3.4 million, roughly. That's what I thought. But I wanted to, I wanted to see what, what we all said. So see, three point, three, let's, go three, let's go 3 million. 3 million bucks from the day, from the day you, you were born to the day you died. 3 million bucks. You're a millionaire. So if we stop and think about this, okay, Wow. I bet you never thought about this, huh? How much money you've, since you've, you've cost money. From the day, from day one to the day, to, to, to now, you spent a lot of money. Money that sometimes we don't, we don't even realize that we have. But all of us go through that. Now, stop and think. That's just a little bit. If you bought razors, if you bought Harley Davidsons, if you bought houses, if you bought, and, and it, it's a lot more than that. How much money can you spend on your 62 lowrider, brother? A lot of money, a lot of money. I remember spending a lot of money on my cars. Praise be just to just to put a lift set on it is five five thousand five thousand bucks a day, just to lift them. So it's expensive. You buy a Harley Davidson today, cheapest one that you know that you could buy maybe ten grand. Praise be to God. So they're expensive. Everything is so expensive. Just giving you ideas, the heads up of the of what we live and what God can do for us instantly. <laughs> Amen. This is what we're looking at right here. God can do for you instantly what you and I cannot do in a lifetime. God is so good and he wants you and me to understand and to know if we rely on him, if we put our trust and faith on him, everything is going to be all right. We'll be able to walk and walk into the temple like this man did. Now, if we, if we move it spiritually... Can I ask you this morning, what is it that you need? Maybe you're not paralyzed from your feet, but you're paralyzed somewhere else, spiritually speaking. What is it that we need? Pastor, well, you know, I have, how many, how many have a hard time to pray? 
Not, not that you don't want to. You got family, you got kids, you got work. You, that really, be honest, in the morning you're in a rush because you got to put all the, everybody to school. You, this one here, this one there. You know, if, especially if you got three, four kids. My God, I don't know how some moms do it. They look like an octopus. <laughs> really? It's, it's just, you know, I, uh, uh, I have no words. I don't know how women do it. So be careful if you're thinking of, I'm going to get married and I'm going to have 10 kids. You better think about it twice. Praise be to God. I mean, they're a blessing. Don't get me wrong. They're a blessing. Now I see my five kids. Uh, they're older now and, 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 and grandkids and great grandkids. When, when, when we all get together, go, Ooh, where did all these kids come from? <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, what happens here is... Let's look into the things of God. God is knocking at our door saying, are you trusting and depending on me? What is it that you are going through? What is it that you need? Be honest. Be honest with yourself. You don't have to tell me anything. You owe me nothing. I owe you nothing. But we both owe it all to God. We owe it all to God. And when we put our faith and trust in God, I don't know what you, what, what, what's going on in your mind. Maybe a physical problem. I have no idea. God knows. What would you do for that? What would you do? Be honest. What would you trade to get out of that situation? What would you give? What would you trade to, to, to get out of that financial problem that the creditors are calling you left and right all the time? I'm just throwing stuff out there. Praise be to God. What would you do? What would you do if you have a child that is crippled and you got to carry that child every single day? Isn't it a blessing to see our children get up and walk? Isn't it a blessing to see our grandchildren? You know, sometimes, oh, you get everything. Oh, these kids, oh, they're running. What if the kids that are running right now were crippled and you had to carry them? See, we, we should stop and think for a little bit. Wait a minute. I'm looking at this all wrong. Lord, thank you. Thank you that my kids can run. Thank you that my grandkids can walk. Thank you that my kids have their eyesight. Thank you, Lord, for it. We should be grateful instead of no, 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 no. Sometimes we don't even understand. We don't realize what other people go through. We have it made. Everything is good. Praise be to God. See, one of the, one of the things that really opens up my mind is every time we get up in the morning, you know, one of the things, I'll share something with you as a testimony. As I get older, I've, I've had uh, trouble in my back because when we had our band, Joe and the Boys, even before that, I would carry real heavy instruments all the time, all the time. I was one of those type of person that if we said we're going to be there at, at a certain time, we're going to be there. And my musicians were always laid back. They would come in late and this. And, and I always got in their case. I always did. All the time. All the time. It, it was like the stars coming in. And I always told them, well, what do you guys think you are, stars or what? Come on, we're here to praise God. We're here to do, do this for the honor and glory of God. I was always there with my truck and trailer, everything loaded. And I would never wait for them to show up. I would open up my trailer and start unloading everything by myself. I was angry. I was mad. These guys will never learn. That's why they never get anywhere. That's why they're, that's why they're where they're at. I, 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 I'm being honest. And I would, there was times when they would show up and I already had everything set up. Praise be to God. 16 years of this. Until one day I said, you know what? Enough is enough. But at that time, my back was already gone in pain. And as I get older, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, I have a hard time. To, I got to get up slow. And, it, and it, I can even hear it. And I've already been to, through, to, to doctors. They checked me out already. And they told me, you got a bad back. That's not going to get. So this is what man is telling me. And I'm talking to God. I'm saying, hey, that's what they say. I know what's wrong. And I'm in pain sometimes, but I won't take any medicine. I don't like that stuff. Take this and no, thanks. That fixes one thing and messes you up another thing. I'll just put up with it. That's me. 
And I sometimes I'm sometimes you'll even see me here getting up. Mm, only I know what I'm feeling. And I gotta wait there and stand up for a little bit and straighten up till it goes away. Boom, 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 boom. <sighs> then I gotta get then I then I walk to the pulpit. But I have that that thing. Now watch. If I sit here and start crying about it, if I sit here, oh, I can't get up anymore. Oh, I can't. You know what? I've talked to God and I've said, you just help me to keep, you just help me to keep going and I'm going. You just give me the strength to get up and I'll get up. Lord, I'm in your hands. If you want to heal me, fine. And if you don't want to heal me, Lord God, just help me so that I can do what I need to do so that I can do it for your honor or glory. <laughs> Praise be to God. Now, I say this as a testimony. Because it's a real deal. Now, we have, I'm about to finish this message, but watch, watch this. We have two, I, I, I've shared with you two stories here. One of the one uh, uh, at, at, the, at the pool, Bethesda, 38 years. And this man here that was crippled all his life. They both got their healing. One of them straight from Jesus. Jesus told him, do you want to be healed? Straight from Jesus. The other one from men that represent Jesus, Peter and John. Are you with me? It's interesting how God is telling us, showing us, if you trust in Jesus, men that are under the covering with the power of Jesus will ask you the same thing. Jesus is telling the man at the pool, do you want to be healed? Peter and John are telling this man, what you are asking us for, we don't have. But what we have, we give to you. Get up in the name of Jesus. The same Jesus that lifted up the, the man, uh, that, 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 yes, that lifted up the man at the pool. It's the same Jesus lifting up this man at a different time. But you see, what am I trying to tell you here? If we put our mind not on the things of this world. Because both of them did not receive from anyone in this world. Both of them. The man at the pool, Jesus just told him, do you want to be healed? Lord, sir, I have no one to help me. I'm not asking you if you want my help to put you into the water. I'm asking you, do you want to get up right now? Peter and John, I don't have the money that you're asking me for. Do you want to walk? Get up in Jesus' name. And I ask you this morning, what is your situation? It's not what I can do for you or Brother Jesus can do for you or the one next to you do for you. But what Jesus is about to do for you, it's your turn. It's your turn. What do you need? See, some people, well, the pastor, well, the leader, well, the... No, no, no. You're being misled. I can't do nothing for you. I'm a man. I am... Giving you the word just like Peter and John. It wasn't Peter and John that got him up. They didn't say get up in the name of Peter and John. They said what we have. What, what were they saying? The spirit of God in us can help you get up. That's why they said get up in the name of Jesus. And he got up and walked. He leaped up. Then he went inside the temple with them as the Bible says. Now I tell you the same thing. It's not what I can do. It's what the power of the word that, God, that I am giving you can do for you. The power of God can change you. The power of God can transform you. Are you receiving this word? You see, the, both paralytic mans received the word. The one at the pool received the word. When he said, sir, I have no one to help me. Do you want to get up? He received the word. The other one, I'm looking for money. I don't have what you have. Do you receive what we have? They, he received. So they both walk. Are you with me? It was a different time. But it was the same Jesus that set them both free. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Jesus that I am preaching to you about this morning can set you free. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Ha! What do you need from God? What do you need from God? I don't know. Maybe in your mind you're thinking, I wish I can, I can do that. I wish, I wish. You know what? The I wish came. It's time. It's your turn. If you just receive 
the word of God. If you just receive what God has given you, it is your turn. Turn to somebody and say, it's my turn. And if God is telling me it's my turn, I'm going to receive it. I'm going to receive my healing. I'm going to receive my miracle. It's my turn. It's time for the musicians to run over here because it's their turn. Praise be to God. God is good all the time. How many of you understand that? It's your turn. Say it with me. It's my turn. I'm going to receive my blessing. Amen. 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 Forgive me for being excited, but I'm not dead. <laughs> I have the power of God inside. That's what happens. And it makes me dance. It makes me move. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. You shouldn't be outside. You should be inside. Shame on you. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, I said I. You should be inside. You're the leader. Everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Hey. Oh, I said I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. I said I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. I said, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Come on. Oh, I said, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I said, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Hallelujah. Whoa, I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. I said I got a feeling. Everything's gonna be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Hallelujah. Can you sing with me? God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He is alive. I feel it in my hands. I feel it. How many of you feel it? Come on. All over me. My God's not dead. Oh, my God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel him all over me. God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel him all over me. How many of you can feel him in your hands? Come on. God gave you hands. How many of you can feel him in your feet? God gave you feet. That's how the paralytic man understood. Wow, now I can dance. I'm not laying on the ground anymore. Now I can dance. How many of you can say with me, I can dance. God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. Come on. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel them all over me. Ah, God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. My God's not dead. He's alive. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it all over me. Hallelujah. How many of you know what you got? Do you know what you got? Say with me. I got it. I got it. Oh, yes. I got it. I got it. What am I talking about? Watch. Talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. Come on. Sing it with me. I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. I got it. I got it. Talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. I don't know how to explain this, 
but there is something inside of me that makes me move something inside of me that makes me dance something inside of me that makes me shout you see when you're full of the power of the holy ghost the holy ghost does something in you that it makes you leap it makes you walk it makes you talk it makes you dance it makes you shout it gives you the ability come on somebody hey! i got it yes i got it hallelujah i got it i got it hallelujah talking about the power of the holy ghost i can't explain it but i got it how many of you got it come on I got it, I got it, hallelujah. I got it, I got it. Talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. Hallelujah. You see what the power of the Holy Spirit does in you? It gives you the ability, just like it gave this paralytic man and the man at the pool it make them do something when you catch the attention when you know that god is watching you when you know that god is listening you have his attention this is why the woman at 12 years of subject of bleeding she knew i can't stop bleeding the bible says she spent everything with doctors but the time came when jesus was coming by when you got his attention you're next something is about to happen hey i got it i got it hallelujah i got it i got it hallelujah Something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. Holy, I got it. Come on, you got it, you got it. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. I got it. I got it. Something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. Come on, are you with me? Jesus, 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 Holy Ghost, 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 yeah, 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 Jesus, 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 I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. 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 Now use your hand. Use your hand. How many of you got hands? Come on. Say with me. Can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody know. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus. He my friend. Come on. I said I can't nobody know. No. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody know. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Come on. Oh, he picked me up and he turned me around. He picked me up and he turned me around. He picked me up and he turned me around. He's my friend. Come on. Can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody know. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Here. No. 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 Do me like Jesus, can't nobody know. Do me like the Lord, can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus, he's my friend. He picked me up. He picked me 
turned me around. He picked me up and he turned me around. He picked me up and he turned me around. He's my friend. Come on. Can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody know. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody know. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Oh, he healed my body and he told me to run home. He healed my body and he told me to run home. He healed my body and told me to run home. He's my friend. Do me like Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. How many of you need a touch from God right now? You know, these two men that I talked to you about this morning, that I preached to you, they needed something. And the only one that could do it for them was Jesus. No money could do it. No friend, neighbor, pa parent can do it. Only Jesus. And maybe, just maybe, those of you here and watching online, what you need, only God can do it. I've got news for you. The same Jesus that lifted up both of this paralytic man can give you what you need. Are you, really, are you listening to me? I don't know what it is that you may need. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's a relative. But it makes no difference. God can do it. Say with me, God can do it. I feel the chains falling. I feel chains falling. I hear the chains falling something is happening when God's people begin to praise him when God's people begin to worship him chains begin to fall chains begin to fall no more lockdown no more tied down the devil is a liar praise be to God God is setting you free God is setting you free come on somebody worship him somebody yes. give him praise yes 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 come on praise him Praise him. 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 Holy Ghost. 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 Praise him. 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 Jesus. Jesus. feeling everything's gonna be all right I, I said i've got a feeling come on everything's gonna be all right oh i said i, I said, I've got a feeling everything's gonna be all right be, be all right. right be all right be all right now watch this jesus on the main line tell him what you want jesus on the main line tell him what you want Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Hey, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh my Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. What do you need? What do you need from God? What do you need from God? He's here. I feel the anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost right in this place. What do you need? What do you need? Get ready, get ready, get ready. For the blessing is about to catch your way. Get ready, get ready, get ready. For the anointing of God is about to touch you. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I know that I know that I know that the power of God is here. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Touch them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Oh, God Almighty. Touch them. Touch them. I feel the anointing. Jesus. Holy Ghost. 
anointing of the most high God touch touch in Jesus mighty name yes 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 my God touch I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right oh I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right be all right be all right be all right come on oh I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right I said I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right 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 come on can somebody praise him this morning i feel that i know and i know that the spirit of god is in this place i feel the anointing of almighty god in this place this morning he is healing he is touching my god reigns hallelujah 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 somebody give praise him somebody give god the glory somebody keep praising i feel the anointing of almighty god in this place thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus holy ghost holy ghost thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord i feel the anointing of god in this place in a beautiful way my god my god i don't know what it is that you may need either here or online but god is doing something awesome if you know it and you feel it you know it you see these two men that i talked to you about this morning they felt it they felt it when jesus said do you want to be free he got his attention when peter and john walked up and said silver and gold we have none but what we have we give to you they got his attention if god can get your attention right now if god can get your attention you're gonna be all right if god can get your attention you're gonna heal if god can get your come up come up here me help us if god can get your attention come on if god can get your attention he's not done yet if god can get your attention he's about to do something in your life that you've been praying for there's some of you that that have gone into your bedroom crying and saying god when when is it going to happen for me god when i've got news for you it's your turn he's trying to get your attention he's trying to get your attention come on there's somebody online you're feeling the holy ghost right now right there where you're at you're watching me on your phone right now you're watching this service god is doing something for you right now the anointing of my god is right there with you hallelujah worship him just lift up your hands and worship just worship just worship just worship you're gonna see you're gonna feel something is happening you're gonna know hey something's going on inside of me i don't feel the same way anymore the way i came in i feel different why because when people start worshiping the spirit of god begins to work hallelujah worship 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 i feel jesus i feel jesus i feel those chains falling i feel those chains falling you see the enemy is always trying to get you or your family chained up to do stuff for god but today is your turn today is your turn what you've been waiting for is about to happen before your eyes 
just like these two gentlemen. What they had been waiting for was happening for them before their very eyes. And they felt it in their feet and they stood up to walk. Now I tell you in the name of Jesus, if you are crippled in some way, speaking spiritually, if you are crippled in some way and you know I can't do this or I have not been able to do this or that, today is your day. I feel and hear the chains falling. Can you sing that song? I feel the chains falling. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship him. Come on, give God that time. He wants your attention. He wants your attention. they're falling I hear the chains falling the devil can't keep you tied down my brother my sister no I hear the chains falling I hear the chains falling hallelujah we worship you devil is trying to place on you I hear the it's falling, falling in the name of Jesus the devil is a liar When God says it's your turn, you're going to stand up in Jesus' name. Holy. Holy. Holy is the Lamb. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. I hear the chains break. Yes, 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 yes. I hear the chains falling. Come on, keep going. Come on, keep going. Come on. I hear the chains falling. Go, 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 go. Break them chains. I hear the chains falling. Yes, in the name of Jesus. All the chains are falling. I hear the chains falling. God is falling. calling you. Get up. Get up. Get up. It's your turn. I 
Yes, there is. Break all those chains. Break all those chains. Yes, 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 yes. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yes, yes, yes. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break them chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Thank you, Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Come on, enough is enough. The devil has kept you down long enough. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. Be who God wants you to be. I hear them chains falling. Yes, 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 yes. I hear them chains falling. The Spirit of God is in this place. I hear them chains falling. Falling. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Come on, can you hear them fall? They're falling, they're falling, they're falling. I hear the the more you worship, falling. you let them go. You let them go. You let them go. I hear the chains The more falling. you worship. The devil is a liar and he's got a set team. He's got to set people free. Hallelujah. We worship you. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Chains breaking. I hear the chains falling. Oh, yes, Lord. I hear the chains falling. I hear those chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Oh, yes, Lord. I hear the chains falling. Come on, are you listening? I hear them falling. Chain, break every chain to break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every chain break every chain break every
Bless the children. Protect them, Lord, from all evil. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, those spiritual chains Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hear the chains Come on, you can hear. You can feel it. The chains of sickness. Father, in Jesus' mighty name. I hear the chains I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. The chains of heartbreak. Be set loose in the name of Jesus. Father, there is power those in the name that are of around Jesus. Around your children. And I pray for freedom I hear the in the name of Jesus. Those in the name of that Jesus. Are around your family. Lord God, you I are the great the I am. And you can change falling. all things oh, yes, Lord. in Jesus' name. Bless her life. I hear the Bless her life. Falling. I thank you, Father, the for her. Of in Jesus' mighty name, I, hear I give you honor, glory, falling. and praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I hear the chains falling. Oh, All those chains of cancer Hallelujah. and sickness. I hear the chains falling. Oh, Can you feel them coming? They're falling. They're falling. I hear the chains falling. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the chains falling. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Isn't it so awesome when you begin to worship? Something begins to happen. I feel the anointing so strong in this place. You see, when it's God's time, no one can stop him. When it's God's time and he says, I'm going to do it for you, no one can stop him. Sometimes, we, sometimes, Brother Jesus, we rely on someone being here for the anointing to move wrong. The anointing moves when it wants to move. Hallelujah. Sometimes we rely on a doctor that the doctor can help me. Let me explain one thing. I've got nothing against doctors. They're there to help us. But don't rely on man. Put your trust and faith in God. He's the one that's going to do the changes. He's the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Can you say that one more time? I feel the chains falling. Come on. I feel the chains falling. I feel it happening right now. I feel the chains falling. Chains falling off. I feel the chains falling. All the chains of sickness. All the chains, the chains of all the garbage falling. that the devil is trying to put in your mind. All the chains of drug addiction. All the chains of alcoholism. All the chains of prostitution. All the chains, all the garbage that the devil is trying to place on you. They're falling. They're falling. They're falling. Come Come on, come on. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Father, we give you all honor. We give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. You are our God, and we trust and depend on you. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for the good. Thank you for the bad, because it, it helps us to grow. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for being there. When we call, you answer. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for your visitation this morning. We feel the anointing. Chains are falling off of people in here and chains are falling off in people that are watching online. Hallelujah. Maybe you couldn't make it to church this morning, but right there where you're at, the anointing 
touched you. Father, we thank you so much. I thank you, Lord, for everyone in this place, and I thank you for everything that you do. Lord, where would we be without you? We'd be nothing. We'd be lost. But, Father, thank you. Thank you that you chose us. Thank you that we can be here worshiping you. We could be somewhere else behind a trash can shooting up. We could be somewhere else doing something that we shouldn't be. We could be somewhere else behind bars. But, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you chose us to be here this morning. Father, thank you. Can you just thank him with me this morning before we leave? Don't ask him for anything anymore. Just thank him. Thank you for life. Thank you for the air that we breathe. Thank you for my salvation. Before we leave, I want you all to help me say the sinner's prayer because there's somebody always watching online or somewhere that need Jesus. Everyone say with me, Lord Jesus, right now, I pray unto you. I repent of all my sins. Come into my life. Change me. Transform me. I open up the door of my heart to you. I want to be one of yours. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. Shake somebody's hand. Have a blessed rest of your Sunday. Hallelujah.